Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jerry Janda. I am with the uh, Community and Influencers team, and I'm here to welcome you all to the final day of the SAP Intelligent RPA online track, and it's been a fantastic week. And we have uh, two guys in particular to thank for that, Marcel and Fausto, who are on the line with me today. As you can see from the slide that I'm sharing, they are SAP champions. For those of you not familiar with SAP champions, SAP champions are part of our influencer program. Influencer programs include the SAP mentors and SAP champions, and the SAP champions are the ones we consider to be the role models within the community. So in addition to doing blog posts and answering questions within the community, great content like that, they put together wonderful events like this one. So just uh, I'm giving them at my chair here a round of applause to uh, Marcel and Fausto for all the great work they've done for us this week and the great work they do for us as SAP champions in general. Um, on the slide, you can see I did include links to their profiles within the community. I highly encourage you to connect with them. If you're not already, you can visit them. You can follow them by following those links. You can also go to the programs area uh, within community.sap.com. You can select programs, then select influencers to learn more about the SAP champions. You can also go to the spotlight interviews area and see a really good interview I did with uh, Marcel last year. In addition to all that, uh, we have content within the community dedicated to the topic we're discussing today. Again, Intelligent RPA, there's a topic page. If you go to the topic page and I've shown the path there in the slide, how you can get to that, a lot of wonderful information. So you're gonna get a great, great session here today, but if you want some additional information, you can go there. There was also a Q and A area where you can ask questions, answer questions around Intelligent RPA. And there's also blog posts. And I know Fausto and Marcel have uh, done quite a bit of work in contributing to that area as well. So on that note, I am gonna hand things over to Fausto and I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who made this great week possible. It's gonna be a wonderful session today. And uh, Fausto, why don't you take it away? Hello, Jerry, thank you so much. Uh, I wanna say thank you for everybody that joined uh, with us this, this, this week. This was a, a really, really great week for, for everybody. Uh, the, the, the attendance numbers uh, uh, grow in our, our expectatives and sincerely uh, uh, we are really proud uh, about the, the team that uh, uh, provide all of this for, for us and for everybody. Uh, a special thank you for Marcel, for Jerry and for Satya that, that today is closing our, 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 our great week. Uh, short to introduce. Uh, Satya is a, a senior director, SAP senior director for venture and new technologies uh, and platforms. And wow, we are really, really uh, glad with her presence with, here with us. Okay, thank you, uh, Satya. It's up to you, and thank you. Hello everyone, thanks for having me. So my name is uh, Satya Narasimhan. I'm the product manager for uh, SAP's uh, Intelligent Robotic Process Automation topic. And I am presenting to you from uh, our office here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So let me just dive right into my presentation by sharing my screen. So I'm personally very passionate about this topic because uh, intelligent robotic process automation is a very interesting and an important application of um, artificial intelligence as a trend for SAP and applying that in a procurement function. I think there is a great potential for our customers to really unlock a lot of productivity and uh, cost savings. So just to dive into, right? So why do we need to care about automating procurement function? So first of all, uh, you know, one of the things I learned um, through my career in management consulting is that to really outperform in the market, you have to be better than your competitors. Being an average is uh, just not good enough. So what we have found through uh, industry research reports, especially one from KPMG that really underscores the true potential a procurement function can gain if they were to automate a lot of processes and tasks and steps in the overall end-to-end -end procurement process. 
For example, if you invest in um, you know automating procurement function, a typical company maybe leverages um, and gets an ROI about 4x. But if you really apply automation and it's too potential, you could really double your return on investment and gain more than nine times your investment in technology to automate the function. Um, on the other hand, you know, what is the cost of procurement as a function to carry out the procurement process? So an average company spends about three, three and a quarter percentage of uh, their procurement spend on just managing the procurement process itself. But you can see the delta of a leading company spending only half a percentage point or you know, even less in some instances by truly automating the overall procurement function, then you're really unlocking a lot of savings. And as a result of you know, getting more return on your investment, as well as reducing your cost footprint, the true benefit is really being able to reduce your overall spend um, really double the amount you could save compared to industry averages if you can embrace the automation and at some um, right and full capacity. So the way to go about this is really looking at, you know, who are the key stakeholders within your organization. So typically procurement roles under the umbrella of a chief operating officer and a procurement head and the organization that cascades from the head of procurement uh, down to various levels, including purchase managers, um, as well as the technical side of the organization, whether it is SAP or Ariba, IT organization, center of excellences, as well as functional areas, such as consultants and business transformation um, stakeholders within your organization. So they all can benefit by really understanding what automation can do in the procurement function. And um, so the, for the next hour, the way I have set it up is initially we'll go through a few content around how we have been able to help our customers realize the benefit of automation in overall from the perspective of how we help SAP as a company helps the customers. And then in the second part, we would go to about a dozen or so curated um, use cases and actual demonstration of applying automation and procurement. And then in the last part, we'll talk a little bit about how to realize uh, automation in your area. So how does the offering work? What are the steps you need to do to discover the use cases, use the technology, and what is that uh, adoption trend looks like? So without further ado, um, let's go into let's go into the next slide. So, um, you know, at SAP, we are more interested in driving the business outcome than uh, positioning technology as a, uh, you know, first lever. So from that perspective, you know, it is very important to understand that um, RPA or automation in general is only a part of the overall picture of puzzles of technology capabilities available um, for you to achieve a certain desired outcome. For example, you know, to reach a kind of a true level of automation, first you need to understand where your process is. So you could use capabilities like Spotlight or from one of our recent acquisitions called Signavio, which allows you to mine the process and understand and describe where your procurement function is in the current state so that you can set up a future state goal for where the process needs to be. Uh, the second benefit for automation will come from integration. Whether you want to integrate, for example, Ariba, Field Glass, and other spend management solutions from SAP with other SAP applications, such as our ERP capabilities in um, S4 HANA or in other LCA application areas, or it could also be integrating with uh, third party applications. So, making that more natively ingrained by using our integration suite and process orchestration and business process management um, could be a solution rather than applying RPA. And once you are able to integrate, you may be able to think about standing up new business processes that you know, weren't possible before. And you could do that by you know, using our business rule services or workflow services and SAP's room, which is really a 
low code way of establishing new business processes. On the other hand, you know, if none of these technologies are not possible, meaning the capabilities may not be there in the application, or you may be demanding more from your process, or it is not feasible, meaning to go through any one of these technologies, you have to invest in a project that becomes more of a month long or year long IT endeavor, uh, then it may not be the right fit for your needs. So that is where you could strongly consider applying RPA as a technology enabler to meet your end business outcome in the context of you know, the other complementary and substitution of um, capabilities that are already available in SAP's business technology platform. So now, you know, once you determine RPA is the right technology to apply, um, what is it and how do you really use it? So what it really is, is a, a very user-friendly development environment where business users and super users can really quickly mock up a set of actions that can be repeatedly executed, um, you know, by really offsetting the manual effort with uh, repeatable execution by an automation bot. So that really what it is. So we do not want this to be a very complex technical integration or an IT project, but really a user defines, hey, I wish we could do certain things automatically. They would go in and model it in and the bot will automatically execute it on their behalf. And um, you know, once you are able to do that as a result, you're able to obviously save the time of the manual effort, as well as in many cases, the manual effort can also induce error in your process, such as data entry, where you may be keying in incorrect values um, you know, out of fatigue, for example. By automating, um, you know, you're basically taking that factor out and really applying the machine for what it is really meant to do, which is, uh, completing highly repeatable, highly accurate processes and tasks. So the way you would actually consume RPA, as you can see on the right, is to three components. The first one is a designing environment with a studio where you would describe and train what the model needs to do. And then second is the orchestrate and monitoring with the cloud factory that would allow the users to consume the right product bots in the right environment. And then the running module, which is with agents that is executed locally in a machine or virtually in a server that would basically replicate and uh, execute the task described in the bot design. Um, so, you know, as a result of applying this technology, what we have seen um, across our customer base is, uh, you know, a set of strategic business value from automation. So the first one is around uh, savings. So you are using your highly valuable human talent to do what is really best uh, use of their time versus uh, you know, using them on a more low value added repeated tasks that generates a substantial amount of savings. And when the savings is realized, you're basically improving the operation by focusing on more high value tasks and by you know, focusing on improving your operation, um, you can achieve a lot of scale by parallelizing the execution. Um, a bot can be deployed simultaneously, whereas to have that level of scalability, you have to hire and train and maintain a, a bench strength of resources to scale your process. So the process can really scale horizontally when you apply technology in this case. And as a result of um, you know, leaning more towards automation and machine technology, you are able to ensure the process is done in a repeatable standardized manner, which means it reinforces the compliance and ensures that the overall process is done right the first time the way it is meant to do. And the result of all of this, uh, you're gonna have great customer satisfaction either internally with your employees and internal customers that you may be serving are externally with your end users and end customers. Um, so the way you would consume automation is you can run it as a um, kind of a combination of human plus machine, meaning I as a user want to now 
have a bot take over my machine and work in parallel with what I'm doing to really execute a task. So that is what we would call an unattended bot because it is, you know, it is available on demand when I need it and it works in tandem with the things that I want to do on a particular job on a day-to-day -day basis. Or the bot can be used in an unattended mode. So once you describe a business process, um, you can say, I want this process to be run on a daily basis or an hourly basis or on a weekly basis. And it can be done remotely in a batch process outside of a particular um, user's environment. And um, you know, with SAP's RPA technology, you just have to author the bot only once and it can be executed in a number of different ways, whether it is attended or in an unattended fashion. So with that, uh, let's just take a quick look at um, how it all comes together. Let me just make sure that uh, you can also view the audio along with this. All right. You have experienced SAP Intelligent Robotic Process Automation the smart combination of RPA and machine learning technologies. So it's the natural next step to enable all employees in your company to build and run bots for their processes using intelligent RPA. That means in addition to traditional bot developers with a deep understanding of technology, you can give automation power also to medium skilled coders and pure business users with no coding background but functional expertise. SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0 is a totally new experience of a bot design with its cloud studio focusing on simplification, intuitiveness and efficient automation building. Easily capture applications, pages and controls and assemble them to build end-to-end -end automations. Use the visual programming capabilities to parameterize and control complex steps in business workflows. No need to install software on your local machine anymore for assembling automations across applications. But having the freedom to still use the desktop agent on any machine in combination with the Cloud Factory for heterogeneous settings consisting of native applications and web applications. Take the next step in automating any component of your IT landscape with SAP Intelligent Robotic Process Automation 2.0. We talked a lot about uh, the benefits of automation and uh, what the RPA is, but let me just bring it real. It's specific to the procurement function before I continue on some of the slides. So the example here is an actual use case of a user in Ariba. Um, suppose you are a procurement manager and uh, when you log into your Ariba screen, every day you are greeted by a whole bunch of to-do lists you see here. And some of the to-do lists could be very well be a very simple action. So you have already taken care of that. All you have to do now is go in and look for the to-do item and really promote the task to be completed. So let's say it's purchase order, it's in the submitted stage. You have already done the work on that. Now you just have to um, move it from submitted to approved or approved to reconciling whatever the task may be, but you're basically going through a repeated step every day and a number of times. And um, that is important because it now triggers the next steps in the process. And it also allows us to collect the operational metrics of how long you know it takes for a purchase order to go from one stage to the next. And most importantly, it allows for the compliance purposes that you as a user has done certain action to a purchase order or an RFQ. But you know, all of these doesn't have to mean that you will take your valuable time and um, just spend minutes or hours just clicking through the system um, to do you know, what's been already done to the RFQ or a PO. So how do you then automate a scenario like this? So in this case, we have applied the RPA bot and trained a model to recognize the Ariba screen. And within the Ariba screen, um, identify the to-do list 
and then within the to-do list, using the user's criteria, whether it is the status as submitted or approved, um, use any one of these filtering criteria to choose the right to-do list to work on. And once you have that list, automatically open those to-do items, open the action, and then migrate the action to the next level. So let's just see how this bot would work. So now, uh, you know, any action that you see here is actually the work done by the bot itself. So it looks exactly like, you know, how you would normally manually navigate into a particular workflow, but now the actions are taken care of by the bot. So in this case, you know, just for the demonstration purposes, we are showing the individual screens the bot is navigating through, but you can set it up in a virtualized environment, or you can even suppress the execution to the background so the user can continue with their normal work, um, you know, while the bot is taking care of the actions on their behalf in the background. So in this case, as you can see, you know, we work through the first set of uh, to-do items and it is recursively going through other items in the to-do list and opening the details page, changing the status to the kind of the next level that you wanted to set it to, and then submits the uh, kind of the requisition back into the system. And as we do that, it gets cleared from your um, list of things to do. So this would be a classic example of how you take automation and quickly train the bot and uh, really realize a cost savings uh, that you know otherwise would be very difficult to realize because this is a use case that you cannot integrate or you cannot apply any other substitutional technology. This is simply mimicking what a user would do on an application. Now, you know, there are many RPA capabilities available in the market. You know, this is not new or unique to SAP's intelligent robotic process automation, but even then there are very strong reasons for applying SAP's own intelligent robotic process automation as a technology against, you know, Ariba as a source or a target system. And the reason is first, it is purpose built for Ariba. Uh, in order to automate an application, you need to know how the application behaves. And we do that by working very closely with engineers who built Ariba in the first place. Um, second is our technology is really geared towards business users, where you know, as you saw in the video, uh, the one before on the demonstration, it's really a drag and drop experience that allows you to quickly model and train what the bot needs to do. And then finally, you know, we have a quick start enablement approach where your time to value on the very first automation scenario should be really in under six to 12 weeks. And the way we make that possible is first trying to release pre-built standardized bot content in our store. These are purpose-built and maintained by SAP. So you can just download and deploy them in your environment or you could take any number of accelerators from SAP or from partners and really start building your first use case using the accelerators as a building block. And these are the ways we basically minimize the time to value for applying SAP's own RPA on Ariba applications. And um, as I mentioned, you know, RPA as a technology is uh, more than three years old for SAP now. And as a result, um, number of customers across geography, across industries, and across functions have really realized the value of applying SAP's intelligent robotic process automation on their processes. Um, the two that I'm really you know, excited about is one, SAP is using its own technology. So here we have a center of expertise that is looking at finance and procurement related use cases and as one um, example of how deep we are applying automation, our own finance team uses SAP's RPA to close our books on a monthly basis across more than 150 countries that we are in. So that really shows the, kind of the depth and the scalability of the platform. Uh, another example is will be with uh, Zulik Pharma. So as a result of pandemic, their orders have really spiked more than 10,000 times rather than applying more people to qualify these orders to ensure that they are high quality and that needs to be fulfilled, um, we have actually trained a bot to look for 
quality criteria when they receive the order. And uh, as a result of that, the bot is now helping them to really scale uh, and meet the spike in order volume that they are receiving. So, you know, the value proposition is really, uh, you know, well documented and realized by many customers. And, you know, if you were to apply to procurement related use cases, we can also share best practices in terms of, you know, how you actually identify and, um, um, you know, apply automation for a particular use case. So here, the criteria we look for is, you know, do you need to bring in data from multiple sources? And is that data available in a variety of format that um, it is making it difficult for you to have a streamlined standardized integration type scenario? So that could be a very good example of where RPA may be a good fit. Um, the second step would be, you know, are the processes highly repeatable that you take, uh, you know, even if it is few seconds, several hundred times a day or several tens of dozens of times a day that takes you away from other value added tasks. So an example would be the to-do list processing video demonstration I just showed a while ago. And then the third one would be, you know, are you constantly switching back and forth between multiple applications to complete a particular step or a process? So oftentimes you combine Ariba or a procurement solution with other applications it could be your email, or it could be an ERP system or a non-ERP system. But if you are constantly traveling between these systems to get a job done, you know, that could be another evidence of, um, you know, a candidate that could be, you know, easily automated. So with that, uh, you know, we have found about four main category areas for, uh, you know, automating in Ariba. The first one is um, around repeated processes. So I'll go into some use cases around that. Um, the second one is around um, entering and verifying data uh, that basically eliminates manual effort involved. And then the third would be kind of re-engineering your entire procurement value chain. So RPA doesn't have to be just task specific to do um, certain things quickly, but it can also orchestrate a very complex application or a business logic. And I have a partner solution that will demonstrate that later in the presentation. And then finally, analytics is very important. And it is often the first step to unlock the full potential of applying machine learning and artificial intelligence to take your procurement to the next level. And um, to really, to get that pipeline set up, oftentimes you may have to extract and uh, wrangle the data and a number of those steps can be really automated by applying automation. Um, so with that, let me just dive into a few use case demonstration, uh, very specific to procurement function. Um, so I have selected about uh, six or seven demonstrations that I want to go through. The first one is uh, guided by automation. So here the scenario is, uh, uh, you know, if, if you are like an SAP and if you're one of my colleagues in uh, Germany, uh, you get a car from the company and um, you have to fill in a form saying, you know, I'm the employee and I want a Mercedes Benz. And um, the person who is now authorizing and creating that requisition now has to take that form and create a purchase order. I mean, you could say, can we create a form? Can we create a web tool to automate it? Why do we have to go through this process? Uh, so this again goes back to, is RPA the right solution for your use case? And let's say in this case, you do not want to, or you cannot implement other ways to automatically trigger creating purchase orders or requisitions in Ariba, then here is how you could do potentially with uh, RPA. So let me just toggle to my demo. So this is the Ariba transaction screen, um, and this is the workflow we built for training the bot. So the workflow here basically says that um, they extract the details for the requisition from Excel, go into the Ariba screen, and then complete the transaction by mapping the fields from Excel into the transaction screen in Ariba. 
So what we have done here is, you know, this is the target transaction screen in Ariba. We have captured this page and we have highlighted all these fields um, that can be automatically populated by the bot once you receive the input, whether it is in an email or in a PDF or in an Excel file, the bot will be now able to take that information from the external system, log into Ariba and populate this particular screen. So let's see how that works. Um, so the design is now complete. All you have to do is now go in and execute the run. Um, so here we have a collection of different types of input we can receive. And one such receive, one such input here is a document that you see here. So it has the person's name <clears throat> and kind of like the uh, purchase authorization limit they have. And uh, they may also have some preference for the type of car they want. And um, it has the signatures, it's been approved by the manager. So now you have to, all you have to do is take that information, put it in Ariba and trigger the requisition creation. So now we are running this bot in an attended mode, meaning uh, the person is now requesting the bot to run when they want it to. So this is the attended mode, but they can also set this up in an unattended mode where they say, you know, at the end of my workday, I want you to take all the emails I have and create the purchase requisitions. And all they have to do is take the same bot and then just schedule it instead of running it manually. So to run the bot, it's as simple as just going to the system tray here. So you see a purple icon. And once you click on that, it will show you a menu of bots that are available for you to run. So here the test flow one is what we wanted to run. And once you click that, the bot is now gonna take over your machine. Um, and then it has picked up the Excel file. And in that Excel file, we found information like the net price of the car, the manufacturer and the license plate number. So let's just go through this one more time. So all these fields are empty. When the BART runs, it pulls up the Excel file. And the Excel file had the car net price, manufacturer, and the license plate. So it has already taken that information and entered into the Ariba transaction screen, and it has completed the process. And um, you know, this is, would be a great example of automating a repeated task that can be best done by a BART than a human user because you are avoiding manual data entry as well as uh, saving the time of a human user where you know it really doesn't require the human qualities like with the virtue of empathy to complete a transaction like this. And this is a classic way of combining uh, automation technology along with the human user to really maximize your productivity. So the second example I wanted to show you is about uh, the analytics and exporting data from Ariba so you can post-process it. So an example scenario here would be, uh, let's say you run a very massive RFP process in Ariba and Ariba already has rich set of processing capabilities to sort the RFPs. So if you wanna sort the input required from your supplier by the lowest bed, so you could do that. If you want to sort them by the delivery date, you, know, you could do that. If you want to apply a combination of these filters, for example, I want to know who can deliver fast, who also have certain supplier certification. Uh, Ariba would still allow you to do a very complex RFP sorting and manipulation just within the system. But you know your process may be still very different. So you may want to take all the RFP data um, you know, Excel could be a choice or it could be an analytical tool such as SAP's Analytics Cloud, or you may have another workflow where you have to take the RFP data, do some post-processing, apply your own custom logic to make a determination on um, how you would want to post-process the RFPs and uh, take them to the next level. So to do all of that, first you need to take the data from Ariba and really set it up in a way it can be used in uh, your own custom process. So in this case, um, the way the bot is set up, again, this is a, we are showing this as an attended use case. So as you can see here, uh, when you open up the desktop agent, it gives you a menu of bots that are available for you. And one of them is uh, the loop export. So to extract RFP, all you have to do is now click loop export. 
And once you trigger that process, now the part is logging on your behalf into Ariba. So let me just pass here. So when I say the part is logging on your behalf into Ariba, you know, what does it actually mean? So it could really mean a number of things. Um, you can log in as yourself, as a named user, or you can also set the bar to say, okay, this is a scalable process. I want a name batch user. For example, RFP export could be the name of the user. It can also use a credential of that user. And this is very important. Let's say if you want to run this bot virtually in a server that's shared by multiple business users. Now, rather than having everyone share their credentials each time the bot is executed, uh, now we can use a shared credential and that can really streamline the way you consume the bot. So in this case, let's say you went with a single sign-on, um, you're already signed in. Now let's see how the bot is continuing to execute. So the bot is trained to navigate to the RFP page. So it's gonna go into this page where there are 18 documents available based on the criteria that you have set here. And what this will now go through is go through each one of these 18 items one by one. So it's going to the award to receive four. It's opening up the full RFP details. And then Ariba already has the ability to export this data into Excel. So if we just focus uh, briefly on this part of the screen and the actions, there was a small you know, blip that basically said, um, you know, menu of exporting data into Excel. And that's how fast the automation works. So this is happening in a real time speed. And it has exported the data. So you can see here, the data.xls is downloaded. You can see here in the status bar. And it has already gone to the next RFP and it has exported that data. As it goes through each RFP uh, item from the from this screen, you'll see the bottom here, uh, the number of Excel files is continuing to grow. And um, you know we have Excel libraries. So this is a use case where we are exporting each RFP to its own file. If you wanna apply logic with them on the bot to combine all of this into one work, um, work group or a work uh, book, uh, you can do that as well. So there is really no limitation in terms of how you can apply automation in this scenario. And uh, what I wanna highlight here is um, to say, you know, um, you can really exponentially go beyond any native analytics capability that are already available in Ariba to get the data or to do post-processing as well as set up the pipeline to do your machine learning and artificial intelligence use cases. And um, to do that is really straightforward to train the bot, get the information by leveraging capabilities that are already in Ariba and really making it more in a scalable form. So the third use case I want to show is basically a reverse of a data extraction. What if you want to enter the data into an Ariba system? And um, you know, a lot of things that are uh, seemingly complex uh, can be really made very simple by applying RPA. Uh, for example, you know, maintaining currency rate in Ariba. Again, you know, you went through your system architecture design and decide, you know, for this particular currency rate. The source system is all over the place. I cannot afford to integrate or I cannot integrate. But Ariba gives you the ability to take a flat file of currency rates and import into Ariba. But then, you know, how do you repeat the process um, automatically where you go to the source system, fetch the currency data and automatically import it into Ariba. So this would be a use case where um, where uh, we have uh, trained the bot to use our own ECC as a source system and um, Ariba as a target system. And what the bot is doing now is logging on behalf of the user into a particular ECC transaction screen. And it is now showing all the um, you know, exchange rate information from the ECC system. And from ECC, we are now exporting that data into an Excel file or a CSV. 
And once that process is complete, the BART is you know, terminating that process with ECC and then logging into Ariba. It is navigating into the administration page where there is the data import export um, task. And within that, you know, the task is already set for importing currency rate conversion. It's navigating into the loading part of that page, choosing the file you just exported from ECC and then completing the import process. So, you know, you may be doing it very frequently or infrequently, but you know, why bother doing this manually at all? So once you have your source system defined and the target workflow in Ariba is defined, you could just model this bot once and it will be automatically taken care of for you going forward. Um, a lot of customers not only use this in an operational mode to take care of tasks such as this, but they also use this as they go through any system migration and go live associated with Ariba. Let's say you have a previous version of legacy Ariba or another system and you're standing up here in Ariba environment, um, the time to live is really critical. You could be really be, um, you know, you're losing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, um, if there is a kind of a risk in your go live schedule that is attributed to any of these system setup type tasks. Now by applying bots, uh, you can basically automate those system setups, data migration, and even some testing um, and really safeguard your go live schedule. All right, so now let's take uh, one of an interesting use case where you're combining RPA with uh, another automation capability such as chatbot. You know, this can really improve the satisfaction level of your internal user on how they interact with the procurement function. Um, so here, as the name implies, rather than navigating to our Nariba transaction or navigating and creating documents and sending emails, could you just chat with the bot and can that bot then trigger the purchase requisition automatically? So an example of this would be from one of our uh, partners, uh, Captain Ray, who built this showcase and uh, demonstrated the capability in Ariba. So here, um, you know, what we are seeing here on the right-hand side is uh, the preview from the chatbot, which is using SAP's business technology platform chatbot capabilities. It has a natural language processing engine, so you don't have to go in and key everything um, that is uh, more standardized. It can be more conversant. So here we are saying, I need all the supplies. And the bot comes back and says, you know, what kind of supplies you want? And let's say you say, I want uh, some um, ink and lead refills. And, um, you know, which in that it gives you kind of the range of things that you go to right order. And the user goes in and says, you know, I want to order uh, uh, one ink and one stamp pack. So the bot is now collecting all the information you need to successfully complete a purchase requisition in a more of a conversation manner. And you could do that just by calling the chat part from your desktop. And um, once the bot has collected all the information it needs, it's going to automatically call an RPA bot. So these two bots are connected with each other using out of the box integration in SAP's business technology platform. So you don't have to do anything extra to combine a chatbot with an RPA bot. So in this case, once the chatbot has completed collecting information and um, it's now going to call the RPA bot. So you can see here that is saying processing your requisition. Now you start to see the RPA bot getting executed. So now it's logging into the Ariba screen and it's navigating into the purchase order requisition or purchase requisition transaction page. And it takes all the information shared to it from the chat bot and then completes the transaction by filling out all the fields we needed and then submitting the request um, you know, to complete the whole process. Now you can see in this case, you can actually uh, visualize the bot getting executed, but uh, this experience can also be in the back end for the end user. So the end user will only see the chatbot. This actual execution of the RPA bot can be done in a server 
Um, so the user doesn't have to see all these transactions and they can continue to do uh, their current activities. So now the way this part is trained is there is also a round trip notifier. So the RPA bot will hand information back to the chat bot once the process is completed and perhaps share the purchase request engine number and uh, that can be notified back to the user that, yep, this was actually completed. So another key demonstration you see here is the bot is now saving the created PDF file and also emailing it. So you can also set up kind of the subsequent actions after a transaction is completed. So oftentimes customers want to share the outcome of a particular transaction, whether it is a document number or a PDF of the document created, you can share that in a you know, shared folder or your own in your own local folder, or you can also create attachments and then send it as an email to the parties that you assign um, that needs to receive this information. So this is really an example of how powerful RPA can be when you especially combine multiple technologies together to really improve the service level for your end user. So now, you know, they don't even have to take extra steps to do a particular job. They could just call a chat bot and then complete the transaction natively and more intuitively from their own, um, you know, instances. So another example I want to um, talk about is uh, how you can incorporate logic into the bot. Um, so this is an example, again, created by one of our partners. And I think it is very relevant for the kind of the timeline we are in where a lot of uh, employees are working from home and they also need kind of an office-like setup in their home office and companies allow them to uh, procure these supplies or set up um, for their home office. And the biggest problem here could be that people are ordering all the different things and that may not be a standard item. So here the example would be, suppose that a person wants to order a desk that they ordered say a couple of years ago for their office and they want the exact same desk for their home office. But then, you know, for a wide variety of reasons, maybe you have a equally viable alternative available for a lowest cost from a better supplier. Uh, but, you know, if you as a user, all you care about is getting the same desk, but the company cares about what they pay for and who they get it from, how do you align these two? So you cannot really force the end user to take extra steps and really, you know, focus on ordering it from the right supplier for an approved item. You could do that, and that would possibly take a lot of time and effort up front to set up that logic and enforce compliance, and also probably reduce the customer satisfaction if I am as a user, rather than saying, I just want my desk from my office, I have to now go through a lot of hoops to get that, uh, maybe it's not a great experience. So what the solution does is, let me just open the solution that was provided by uh, Deloitte, is that um, you know it has three personas involved. The first persona is the actual user. So they are going in to Ariba and they're pulling in their history of past purchases. And then they are basically copying over um, the desk that they created a while ago or the disk caddy that they wanted a while ago, and then creating a new request and um, having it shipped to their, to their home. Um, now, this process is very straightforward. You know, it's very intuitive. Um, you know, I like this caddy. I have used it in my office. Now I want it in my home office. Um, so you just automatically create that requisition. Now, what happens now is within this workflow, um, rather than auto approving this, now you can see an IRPA bot is set up as a step in the approval workflow. So now what would this bot do is, if I fast forward this video, um, you know, when a requisition is received and um, the requisition has items that are not a standard catalog item and you maintain a list of um, approved items in a file, for example, in this case, an Excel, 
and that shows you know what is an approval approved substitute for a particular item what the bot will now do is go into the purchase requisition look for all the ones that the bot is now need to approve and uh, replace the item automatically from a non-standard item to a standard item and also add notes so that both the cost center approver as well as the requester are aware that uh, a replacement was made on this requisition. So the bot here not only is automating, automating, automating the compliance of a process, it is also providing transparency. It's not just a black box execution where you request one thing and you end up getting something else, but it gives you the transparency by adding notes that um, adding notes that uh, uh, you know a substitute has been made based on what is available in the catalog that is closely related to what was originally requested. So that's the notes here made. Um, so in this PO by the RPA bot. Um, so this will be a great example where you're improving the end user's experience. At the same time, you're improving the compliance uh, while minimizing the time and the amount of investment you need to make um, to make both ends meet. I know we are getting closer on time. Um, you know, I think I have a couple of more examples I can share. And I can also monitor the chat to see if there are any questions that has come up. Um, but um, you know, um, another example would be: um, What if you have two different instances of a purchase order? Suppose you are going through some migration effort. There is an old purchase order, and then that purchase order number is very important for you to maintain the continuity of the business operation. But when those purchase orders are captured in the new system, uh, you cannot maintain a unique number. You get a new purchase order and somehow you need to link the two. So this is the showcase. This is again a migration type use case, um, going back to safeguarding your go live and improving your um, you know, operational efficiency. So this would be an example where um, the solution was built by our partner HCL. And um, the use case here is you have a set of um, purchase order files, um, three different Excel files, one with a header, one with some purchase order details, and another with some split account details. All of these are standard Excel templates prescribed by Ariba, and there are abilities to automatically improve, import, and process them in Ariba. But um, if you have to do so many of them so frequently, and that's where the process becomes a little bit more complex uh, to execute. So here, what the bot is trained to do is, um, you know, suppose the data is already prepared and it's available for you in Excel. Take that data, navigate to the um, Ariba administration page, um, and then look for a task that will allow you to import data. And once you are in that task, you know, import by using the three files we just showed you and complete that particular process. So now this is all automated. So even though the ability to import data and how the data is translated into an Ariba transaction, so those capabilities are already in Ariba, but we are basically taking that to the next level of automation by really supplying the Excel file and then pulling up the Ariba import screen and completing that process itself. So now once the bot uploads the files, Ariba will take its own time to um, make required to process that data and create the um, kind of the purchase requisitions. And once that process is complete, we will see in a second, the bot is now going to wait for getting the response from Ariba. Um, that is another logic and intelligence that you have available because Ariba is a cloud system and it is really meant for users to interact with it. And a bot can be, you know, tens to hundred order magnitude faster than a human user. And if you are kind of pushing so much transaction through Ariba, uh, it very well could de degrade the performance. So in this case, for example, when the import was complete, the Ariba says it's processing and then it changed to submitted. The bot was allowed to kind of wait until it got that completed as a signal back from Ariba. 
And once it received that, then it went to the next screen of um, looking for each one of the new POs that were submitted, and then go in and enrich that purchase order data with some additional information. And it could be, you know, what was the old PO number? And this is how you are able to, you know, ensure continuity from your old PO to the new PO and uh, really streamline your business process even as you go through the migration. And you are doing that while ensuring that your Ariba tenant is used in an optimal way um, by applying automation. So I have seen a lot of examples where uh, customers try to use their own methodologies in automating Ariba transaction. Um, you know, capturing the fields, understanding how a particular Ariba screen works as well as throttling your API call and then the transaction throughput is something that we understand very well. And we make that available for you as a best practice within RPA as an Ariba connector that allows you to kind of build the use case and often be running with it versus worrying about kind of the unintended consequences of running a bot in a manner that may kind of um, create some negative consequences of potentially, um, you know, locking you out or slowing down the entire Ariba tenant. And uh, I think I'm towards the end of the demos I wanted to show. Uh, the last example I want to show is to just highlight how complex the bot could be. So here is an example of a non-PO invoice. There's a use case that was built by our partner Startup Consulting Services. Um, just in terms of time, I think I've shown you another example of how the bot will run. I will just highlight kind of the application logic that they were able to build in within this bot. Um, as you can see, kind of processing a non-PO invoice is uh, has to go through number of um, decision points, uh, number of steps in the processes, and uh, based on the decision points, you may have to take certain course of action. So within this workflow, you can see about seven or eight spots where RPA was called out. Uh, now, the TCS team was able to demonstrate how they can really build a very powerful bot with uh, enough logic built in for this end-to-end -end workflow where um, you can take non-PO invoices, really work through all the steps that are required um, that would otherwise be a manual intervention and really automate them, as well as have the automation done in a way that is robust so that you, know, you have very little or no exceptions at the end of it. So you can really achieve the true potential for automation. Um, so with that, um, I just wanted to do a quick wrap up, um, but before I do that, let me just check if um, there are any questions in the chat. Hello, Satya. We have one one question, and and we wrote here in Zoom chat. Okay. SAP Copilot also have chart support. How is it different from RPA? So this is referring to the use case I demoed, where the purchase requisition was created from chatbot. So um, just to clarify, that's a demonstration of two different technologies coming together. The chatbot is not an RPA functionality. It is really what you, the question here is highlighting. Uh, so we are basically taking Copilot and then the Copilot is now integrated out of the box with an RPA bot. So as an action from Copilot, you would be calling an RPA bot, which will then complete the execution um, of the chat session by creating the purchase order. So basically combining the best of both worlds where the chat bot is now calling an RPA bot to finish the conversation transaction request. Um, so let me just jump ahead here. So, you know, um, hopefully so far you have a very good understanding of the potential for automating in procurement function what are the typical use cases that you may be able to leverage. And the way to kind of realize this value is really by kind of going through some of your initial 
um, bot uh, execution. And there are two ways you can do. So we can engage from SAP side uh, to provide this as a service. Or you know, we can also go through you know any number of our um, highly trained and talented partners. Um, some of them I highlighted in the showcase. And um, you know, really, what it takes is to identify the use case, really mock up and design that bot, and take it to production. And depending on the complexity, the complexity being the mass action use case, which is a very simple task, being on the low complexity spectrum. And then the non-PO processing, which the complex workflow and logic being one of the intermediate high complex scenario, you are really looking at anywhere from six to 12 weeks from the time we start the conversation till you can actually build the bot, test it, and release it in your productive environment. So the time to value is very short and the benefit can be pretty high. And um, that agile fashion is how we like to work in um, RPA type use cases. Uh, so with that, you know, just to wrap up, um, you know, automation for Arriva or procurement in general um, can be a really powerful way to really take your procurement function to the next level. And by using SAP's intelligent robotic process automation, you would be getting the best of both world of how to automate um, Ariba applications at the best practice level, as well as how you could future-proof your bot development by giving you a low-code citizen development um, type experience for the overall RPA consumption as well. Um, so with that, um, I want to leave you with a uh, few um, resources to continue the conversation. One of them would be the blogs, specifically tailored for uh, Ariba use cases. All the use cases I just discussed, we have created a, a very detailed description of these um, along with some additional information in our blog post. So that could be a great way to um, learn more about these use cases. And uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me or any of my colleagues if you have uh, any additional questions or um, if you want to take this conversation further. So with that, um, I'll uh, stop sharing and over to you. Okay, okay. Satya, uh, well, I think that your, your demo was really, really good because uh, the examples that you saw brings a huge value when you are talked to understanding when you start to have clarity about the, the, the automation opportunities in procurement. And it was really, really good. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And now I will, I will give a, a, a space to Jerry, to Jerry say some words too, if, if he desire. And I think that is important to reinforce that we had an incredible week when we had opportunity to, to, to tell a little more and to show a little more about the IRPA. Uh, we have a, 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 a really over expected uh, quantity of participants since the beginning. And I'm really, really happy. I wanna say thank you for everybody, for SAP team, for our champions team, for, for our community members. And wow, that's all from my side, Jerry. It's up to you. <laughs> well, thank you for giving me the final word, Fausto. Um, just that uh, it's been a really great week. I'm, I'm so happy that we have great speakers like, like we've had today and all throughout the week and also great champions like uh, Fausto and Marcel who make events like this possible. I would say, you know, don't, don't, let, don't let the online track end this week, right? The online track can continue in SAP community. If you go back and watch the replay, check out some of the links all of us shared uh, there's always conversation going on within the community. You can ask questions, get answers, find great blog posts. I know um, Fausto and Marcel have even more content planned throughout the year around this topic. There is a topic page so much around intelligent RPA, around community, and it's because of great members like Fausto, like uh, Marcel, that the SAP community is such a wonderful learning resource for, for topics such as this one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to plan the event, to lead the event, and to and also thank you very much for allowing me to be part of the event. It, it really means a lot. 
Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much. Being safe for, for everybody. Uh, and that's all from my side. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.